Good morning. Hi there. Hello. How are you? Well, thank you. Okay, you're good. Well, good morning, everybody. Ken Phelps here from the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome you to our webinar, Business as Unusual, uh, presented by the Daytona Regional Chamber and our friends and partners at the Daytona Beach News Journal. Uh, we are certainly in unprecedented times. Uh, it's changing how we're all doing business, uh, including the Daytona Regional Chamber, but there's strength and partnership and community, and I believe today's presentation will be uh, a great example of this. So we want to hit a couple of housekeeping items uh, before we get started for today. So if, you've, uh, if you're in already, great. If you haven't already, please mute your microphones so we can help minimize background noise and make sure everybody can hear our, our presenters as we're going through the program. If you have a question at any point during the presentation, uh, ask that using the chat uh, function on Zoom. We're going to be monitoring that, so we'll get to as many questions as we can uh, in our allotted time. Uh, if you miss something, uh, we will be recording today's session and we'll be uh, posting that, sending it to you via email. We'll be posted uh, on the Chamber's website on our uh, COVID-19 resources page, so we'll make sure we get you details on how to access this recording uh, after it's done. Uh, and uh, make sure you can go back and, and follow up on anything you miss. So uh, that said, we're gonna get the show on the road. My pleasure to uh, welcome Jane Katana, the general manager of Daytona Media Group, uh, among many other business entities over at Gatehouse, <laughs> Gatehouse Media. So Jane, take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Ken. Um, and thank you to the Chamber for all you're doing right now to really help support our community and our local businesses during what you said was at just an unprecedented time. I know we certainly appreciate your partnership. Um, so let's get started. Our topics today are related to information and communication. Uh, first, a discussion surrounding filtering information from credible sources and how then to effectively and efficiently communicate that information and other relevant business information to your employees and customers. Um, next slide, Olivia. You know, this quote from the New York Times uh, really spoke to me. You know, when you're holed up in your apartment with no end in sight, you start to count your blessings. One of those is the intranet. It allows us to stay connected to families and friends and colleagues, yoga instructors, religious leaders, and musical artists, even while we're physically apart. Maybe it's not so socially isolating after all. If there is a silver lining in this crisis, it may be that the virus is forcing us to use the internet as it was always meant to be used, to connect with one another, share information and resources, and to come up with solutions to urgent problems. We hope that the information we'll share with you today will help you in navigating through this time. Uh, next slide. So our first speaker today um, is Pat Rice, the editor at the News Journal. He also has us oversight of the St. Augustine Times now, and he's gonna talk to us a little bit about filtering relevant information that's credible. So Pat, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Pat Rice, editor of the News Journal, and I'm uh, speaking to you from my kitchen. <laughs> uh, uh, our entire staff is working remotely. Uh, uh, we, we are still getting out and talking to people uh, uh, in person, but a lot of the uh, conversation, of course, from a distance. Uh, we're doing a lot more uh, phone interviewing and that sort of thing than we would normally um, because we have to. Uh, uh, but um, uh, that's just sort of a backdrop of kind of what our, our work circumstances are what, like in the news journal's newsroom. Um, it's, I think right now uh, uh, it, it's important for everybody to uh, be thinking in terms of uh, sorting what is credible information from uh, information that may be, may be factually correct or have facts in it, but also is interspersed with opinion. And um, uh, while uh, I, I think the New York Times uh, point is well taken that I think people are using social media more to connect with family, to uh, touch bases, to let people know how they're doing personally. Uh, the world is a lot different than it was 10 years ago, and it's partly because of social media, and uh, social media is still the place where, uh, where there's a sort of collision between what people think 
and what their own personal beliefs are, their own personal opinions in the facts. And so uh, there are, and over the last 10 years also, there have been a proliferation of news sites out there, mostly national ones, uh, that just routinely mix political point of view uh, or take facts and try to uh, slant them to, for a political point of view. Uh, and so that's, that's a tricky landscape for people to navigate these days. Um, the two places where that, you know, if you're on Facebook, uh, on Twitter, uh, you'll know that uh, just so much of the content that comes along uh, has a point of view. And, uh, and so it's not necessarily just telling you here are the facts. It's, it's telling you here are, uh, here are my personal beliefs. Here's my personal filter for those facts. And so I think that's created a little bit of tribalism, uh, more so than uh, we had a decade ago. And it's just something that everybody has to uh, uh, realize looking at, when they're looking through uh, content, especially on social media. Uh, that's something that the News Journal has tried to avoid in all of our coverage. We do have an opinion page, of course, but we really uh, take steps to separate what ends up on our opinion page versus what our reporters are doing out there and trying to cover the news. Um, uh, I think we can go to the next slide. So uh, what have we been doing in terms of covering the news? Uh, first, uh, uh, there's an inaccurate number there. It says we've published more than 200 local news stories uh, since March 16th. It's now more than 250 local news stories. Uh, uh, we've also shared lots and lots of stories from our fellow Gannett papers across Florida uh, from their communities that people can look at. Uh, to give you an idea of the interest in this news, uh, our website in March of 2019, we had 1.8 million unique visitors, which is a really strong number for a, a community our size. Uh, but this March, with the month not even being over yet, we've already have 3.1 million unique visitors. So uh, our website combined with uh, our print edition are attracting uh, record amounts of, uh, of uh, customers right now because people have such great interest in what is going on out there in this uh, uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, coronavirus stories, I've told our staff, nobody is really covering another beat. We're all coronavirus reporters right now. That's really all that we're doing. Uh, we're, we're covering other news, of course, but that is our number one thing that we're looking at. And the stories generally fall in three different areas. Uh, health, the sort of the general, what are the, what's the tale of the numbers today? Uh, what are health stories related to coronavirus? Uh, the second, and this is probably the most important thing to me, is uh, business and employment stories. If you're in the business community, you know how much this has already impacted you. Uh, that is our number one story, is how is it impacting our local businesses? And by extension, how is it impacting employees? And that is a huge story here right now. And the final thread are coping stories, like, uh, is there bread at the grocery store? Uh, where can I find toilet paper? Uh, what can I do if I'm just shut in and I'm feeling uh, mentally unstable? Where do I get help? What's going on in our schools? Those kinds of stories. So that's, those are the sort of the three threads. Uh, but again, our number one story is, is the economy. And uh, I don't think that that's going to change any time between now and when this, uh, uh, when coronavirus is no longer dominating the news. Um, and I think that's all I have on that one. And it, one of the things that I did want to just point out to everybody is that our goal isn't just to report, but a lot of what we're doing right now is just informational. It's designed to readers as much uh, information as they can that helps them to uh, endure and survive this uh, pandemic. Uh, one of the things that, we're, that we started uh, early on that's uh, going pretty well is a, we're 
a building and growing list of restaurants that are providing curbside or to-go service. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's one of the things that we can do that um, I think can help people uh, to get out there and support those businesses. Um, we're doing a lot of things related to the schools of just trying to keep parents of 60,000 children and uh, more than that in Volusia and Flagler counties uh, up to date on remote learning that begins on Monday. Um, we've uh, provided lots of information about how to keep homes and workplaces sanitary, uh, that kind of information. And uh, starting on Sunday, we're beginning a series on uh, what it's like to live within a pandemic. Uh, it's just a series of profile stories. Everybody from a hotel owner who's, uh, uh, who now has just two people staying at their hotel uh, to people who have lost their jobs uh, to uh, healthcare workers who are on the front lines of uh, the pandemic that I think, uh, you know, one of the things we have to keep in mind is how to humanize this story. And so I think sort of in closing my part of this, uh, a, our staff is working just, just full time uh, on this. Uh, it's, uh, I'm really proud of our staff for how much work they've done. Uh, and we're gonna continue to do that because that's what our job is. That's our First Amendment role and responsibility. And uh, uh, we, is, we are gonna do everything we can to, to help business. And at the same time, we really appreciate how much businesses have helped and supported us. And um, that's it. Thank you, Jane. All right, thanks, Pat. Um, Livy, if you wanna to flip to the next slide. Uh, we also wanted to point out that obviously the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce is a great resource and they have this great page up with one page summaries and business topics related to the issues. Uh, Ken or Nancy, did you wanna speak at all to this page real quick? Yeah, Jane would would love to. You know, as part as this really started to uh, to roll out, and and we started seeing the restrictions and the impact that the COVID nineteen outbreak was having on business, we started reaching out to our uh, chamber members to get an idea for some of the struggles that they might be facing. Um, one of the most common themes was them filtering the just sheer volume of information that was coming out from. Uh, presidential press conferences to press conferences from our governor down to the county levels. Um, and I talked to a couple of members who said that they were watching the press conferences and missed key parts of the information there. And they were actively engaged in, in gathering that information. So uh, we put together a website that could kind of serve as a one stop uh, for our members, but as well as the, the community at large um, with some links to some of the local state federal partners. So if you have a question on what's happening in Volusia County, there's a direct link to Volusia County Emergency Management. If you have a question on uh, how the disease should be treated or symptoms, there's a link directly to the CDC that you can get that information. Um, we also put together some uh, one-page uh, resources, business-related for uh, things like the, the SBA and the State Emergency Bridge Loan programs that are, uh, that are out and available to help small businesses in particular, but businesses in general, navigate this crisis and get through to the other side uh, while keeping their businesses operational and their uh, employees uh, employed at their operations. Uh, we've actually, since we uh, met the other day, have updated a little bit more. It was getting, there was getting to be so much information on this page, we actually developed a sub page that will be uh, some of the resources that have been up there for a while, as well as uh, webinar recordings and those kinds of things. So that'll be where you find it uh, after we're done today and with any of the other program that we do going forward. And then at the bottom of that page, we put it out for uh, businesses in the community to be able to submit changes to how their operation is going. And this really, we got a flood of information as the um, direction came out from the governor that all restaurants had to close to dine-in service and begin takeout and delivery orders only. And so we wanted to uh, provide a platform for restaurants, but all other businesses to communicate to their clients and to the public um, how they're operating. Are they taking meetings uh, by phone and email and, and remote only? Are they uh, accepting clients by, by appointment and practicing social distancing? So this is a great resource that uh, both businesses and the general public can use. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about it. And uh, uh, we look forward to continually keeping it updated. This is probably as close uh, as our work comes to working in a news environment 
uh, just keeping the uh, information up to date. It's uh, uh, um, sometimes a minute by minute process. So uh, we hope that people will check that out and that will be the, the landing spot for the recording of the webinar once we're done here this morning. All right. So let's go back to the deck, Olivia. Um, thanks, Ken, for that. And thanks, Pat, again. I think there's two great resources you now have at your fingertips. Um, and Ken, it's funny you say it's minute by minute. You're getting a little life that Pat leads every day, you know, constantly updating. So, all right, moving on to our next segment. Um, just real quick checking. I don't see any questions in the chat, but does anybody have any questions for Pat or Ken before we move on? Okay. So communication is the key to making your team stronger. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to communicate downward to your employees. Um, our speaker is James Blasco. He's our ad director here in Daytona. So James, I'll throw it over to you. All right, thank you very much, Jane. So uh, the first thing we wanna start with is, is a quote. You know, The guiding principles of leadership are the same regardless of whether the team is located under one roof or they're dispersed in some way. The real question is, how do you take the best part of managing an office team and translate that into a remote environment? And you know, speaking personally from what we have uh, experienced in the last week or two uh, here at the News Journal and Local IQ, um, that was a that was a big shift for us, and I know it was a big shift for a lot of you. Um, you know, there's some folks who have worked remotely; it's uh, pretty normal for them. But for a lot of people, it isn't, and clearly it wasn't for us. And we're gonna talk through some steps, both from a technical side of how to position uh, your team for communication, um, and also some practical steps you could take in that communication to help be more efficient and helpful and useful uh, to your team. Many of you are in leadership positions. Um, you're, you're, you're kind of learning this process too, of how to coordinate this uh, and keep this routine for your staff, make it comfortable for your staff. And you know, Pat shared, a lot of information uh, on the content that uh, we are sharing with uh, everybody in the market as it relates to th this you know, horrible situation. Um, and then Ken shared, you know, even more details, you know, all of that has to be taken into account because it's impacting the individuals uh, who are part of your team, but it's also impacting your business operations. So let's walk through uh, some ways that you could communicate effectively with your team. Um, and we're gonna start with some basic tools that you can use. So some of these you're, you're very familiar with already. Uh, Zoom, Skype, Google Hangouts, uh, FaceTime, uh, Microsoft Teams. These are all very uh, easy tools to, to incorporate into uh, your organization to keep the communication uh, seamless and timely and effective, uh, very easy to use. But there's some other tools out there you might not be as familiar with that could be very uh, useful as well. So we have uh, Choir, which is basically a workflow um, management platform. Uh, helps you organize your day-to-day uh, -day task, everything from a, a really big goal, uh, working through a project, uh, down to the daily tasks that are involved in, in getting that project completed. And it allows your team to communicate uh, as one, almost like there's a big whiteboard in front of everybody, uh, in a very timely fashion to get things done. So that's just one other tool, uh, Slack, uh, was already mentioned, we use Slack uh, quite frequently at Local IQ uh, to make sure that not just our team here in Daytona Beach uh, can communicate with everybody, but our organizations across the United States can communicate and keep us on track, keep us focused as one unit. It's kind of fun, it's like a, a internal Facebook. Uh, we do a lot of celebrating uh, successes, sharing good information and training even through Slack. So that's another good tool. And then there's Creative 365. Uh, this is kind of like a storytelling tool. Uh, if you're looking for ways to produce, say, video content uh, or uh, really intuitive and dynamic slideshows uh, and presentations, this is a, a, an easy to use tool that you can incorporate, have your team members utilize. Uh, it even does things like uh, uh, for administrat administrative purposes, uh, such as uh, putting contracts together and executing those contracts, creating PDFs and keeping uh, all of your documents in line. So these are just some tools. We have a link here that you could click and it basically will walk you through some of the tools. It has links to the sites uh, for these tools and you could get uh, even more information about how to utilize them within your organization. Next slide. So oh, there you go. So 
So uh, I want to kind of start the talk, though, with a funny video. I think it's funny. Um, as it, uh, Here's a reporter, I believe, up in Asheville, uh, who is using a mobile device. Uh, I believe they're, they're happy to be using Snapchat. And, well, I'll, I'll let it go from here, but I think this person forgot to take their filters off. So we'll, we'll have that link. You can watch it maybe a, a little cleaner, but uh, kind of a funny moment. Uh, I don't know how funny it was for this gentleman at the time, but uh, where uh, he, he really maybe didn't prepare uh, appropriately for his uh, video experience uh, that he was sharing. So let's walk through some, some ways that you can be prepared, especially many of us are having our virtual team meetings, our standups, uh, things like that. I can tell you, uh, we have two meetings a day, our team. Uh, in our staff. So we have an 8.30 uh, virtual standups and we have a 4.30 virtual standup. And one of the important steps to these meetings is A, we don't want to waste people's times, uh, uh, but we, we need to make sure that we've planned for these meetings. And that's probably the first thing is making sure that you have specific talking points, topics, and information that you want to share. And there's a purpose for sharing those, uh, especially now when we, you know we're interrupted you know, on you know, the number of sales calls and things we're going on clearly, right, with everything that's going on. So we have to um, utilize our time to focus on things like training um, and development and uh, kind of team, team building exercises uh, versus uh, other things that we would normally talk about. Uh, make sure the objective of the meeting uh, and where your audience will be uh, is decided in, in advance. Um, in this case, pretty easy. Most people are at home, but um, because of where they're located, you have to decide what tools to use. So again, you have resources like Zoom and Skype and, and so forth, but you might need to decide on different tools for different types of meetings. Um, test the equipment. We just saw the gentleman who kind of, you know, left his filters on, but even this morning, I changed locations in my house, uh, set everything up, and I had to test it and make sure it worked. And uh, that goes, you know, not just for you, whoever's running the meeting, but you need to make sure your team is set up and that their equipment is working as well. Um, Make sure that the attendees have uh, all the materials. It uh, sounds kind of obvious, um, but one thing that we make sure that we do is we have a, a shared doc, uh, a Google doc um, folder. So when the meetings are done, we put our, our collateral there. So at any time people can access the material. Um, sometimes we put it in advance and sometimes we will send out things via email in advance uh, if we think it's important enough for people to have prior to the meeting. So those things are basic, but you got to kind of check the box every day when you, when you run your meetings to make sure those things are happening. And then always have a backup plan. I say have a backup to a backup. Uh, it's really important. You know, things aren't going to work all the time, uh, and, and you have to have a way to communicate. So if all of a sudden Zoom's not working, the internet breaks, something like that, um, you know, have a, have a dial-in number, have something you could turn to so you can continue to communicate with your staff. Next slide. Okay, so during the meeting, um, it's important to set expectations. Like I said, we were kind of new to this. Uh, we always met in our, our conference room every Tuesday morning, and it was pretty easy. It was very routine, um, and now it, it's not. Um, so when we started having our virtual standups, uh, we kind of we set the expectations uh, how people should prepare, not just from a technical side, making sure their equipment and things work. But also, you know, how are you going to communicate during the meetings? Who's going to speak? Um, there's a structure to the meetings. Um, and then what kind of engagement we expect from our staff during the meetings. It's easy to, you know, not show uh, uh, your, your face, you know, turn your video off, uh, put things on mute, and gosh, it's like you're not even there. Um, so we ask our team members to keep their video on, um, to keep things on mute. Uh, we use that strategically, like we mentioned here. But um, we do want people communicating the point of, the virtual team meeting is not just to listen to me or Gene or anybody else speak the entire time. Uh, we want people involved. We want to keep, keep people engaged and focused. Um, we, we do icebreakers. Um, we, we kind of joke around. 
especially in the morning uh, when people are just starting their day. Um, we'll do some fun things here and there. We're going to talk about a few more fun things at the end of this year that you can incorporate to, to improve your meetings. Um, hybrid meetings, we really don't have these so much because everybody is uh, out of the building. Most people are out of the building uh, right now. But if you do have these uh, moving forward, um, you want to understand how you want to put these together, whether they're going to people are going to be throwing workstations or maybe in groups, things like that. But I think that's down the road since we're all pretty much working from home right now. Um, use a, a back channel for sure for messaging. So basic text messaging or instant messaging. Um, so sometimes communication has to happen and take place during the meeting. Uh, maybe you need to share something kind of offline. Uh, have that available, uh, but also have it available in case somebody all of a sudden loses their internet and they're not getting the information that they can reach you in, a, in an easy way. Um, and then leverage video, video and screen sharing. I think one thing that we have seen through our meetings uh, is I, I love the engagement and it's because people can sh share their screens. Uh, we have a lot of different you know, tools and training uh, items that we utilize and uh, all of our team members are in, in the process of sharing information as they find new things. If they have different experiences, we turn the screen over to them and let them uh, chime in and physically show us uh, what they've discovered. So that's really important. And uh, I kind of skipped over the, there's a link. We don't have to look at it now, but uh, the virtual uh, work insider is a great video, a great blog on how to run your, your virtual team meetings. It's really, really good. I highly recommend looking at it. Next slide, please. And then uh, last but not least, uh, you know, after the meeting, sounds simple, but recap, you know, what you talked about and let the team and your employees know kind of your expectations for next steps. Uh, we typically leave every virtual stand up with an ask of each team member, something we want them to follow up on, uh, maybe a homework assignment, uh, maybe uh, some just important items. Uh, you know, sometimes they're big, but most times they're small things they can do pretty easily. But there's always a recap and an ask. Uh, and then have a feedback loop. Um, I've got a lot of feedback. Uh, fortunately, it's been you know really positive from the team. Um, but we do you know it's an open door, so to speak. So we want that feedback, and we want folks to have the opportunity because again, uh, folks are going. There's an anxiety out there. Uh, people are you know uncertain, and uh, if the information is not delivered properly or it's not helpful, we need to know that because I think people having good information, timely information is going to help uh, with their anxiety and kind of how they're feeling overall. Okay, so some fun things that you can do because, you know, we spend a lot of time focused on uh, all these all these tasks and things we, we want to execute. And sure, we like to be out there, you know, helping our clients and sometimes it's not possible right now. Um, but we, we forget that, you know, we can't step away from our normal human activity. What would we do as a team if it was somebody's birthday, right? We'd have a celebration uh, for them during the meeting or maybe on the sales floor. So why can't you still have a birthday celebration for somebody? Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Um, how about uh, we're doing today? I, I think I got the blessing for a, a brief happy hour towards the end of the day and maybe not spend, you know, that 30 minutes uh, going through a pipeline in our CRM, but um, rather uh, just enjoying each other's company, um, no matter what they, they're holding in their hand, uh, just some time, some downtime, some bonding time, and, uh, you know, have some, some you know, friendship time uh, between the team. I think that's really important. Um, there's, there's, you know, different types of things you could do, uh, like take your child to work. That's such, you know, important part. I think of all of us have done that at some point, and it's such a cool experience, and the kids love it. Um, so why, why couldn't you do that now? Right. So, you know, schedule that for one day next week and, and have, uh, folks, children show up and get on the screen. Maybe they can show a picture that they've drawn or something they've done on their virtual school time, whatever they're doing uh, and share that. And I think that would be really important. I think those moments, maybe more than a lot of different things we're doing could be some of the most important moments for the team right now. And so this is just one example. It's my favorite example. We had, we had a few other examples too, uh, but this is great. This is our folks in, I believe it's Fort Myers. So uh, they just took some time, not a lot of time, to have a sock puppet talent show uh, on their Zoom meeting. So the instructions are pretty simple. You can follow along. Uh, you make your own sock puppet. So that, that's pretty straightforward. You can showcase your special talent. Um, uh, your, your puppet could be all kinds of different things, right? Maybe you get ping pong balls and spit them up and juggle them in the air out of the stock. I don't know. Um, 
and then uh, you basically have a talent show and you give away some prizes. So kind of a silly thing, but again, uh, these things bring people together like little else does and it breaks up the monotony and brings the stress level a little, little lower than it needs to be. And I think it's a great place to start with your team as you're going through this process. So hopefully a lot of these things uh, hit home and will help you. And uh, check out the links that we have in the, in the presentation because that information goes a little bit further and uh, I think they're really good uh, bits of information to have. Thank you. All right, thanks James. Uh, let's get to our next slide. So this next section is, I think is really important. Um, customers want to hear from you and they want to know what you have to say um, and learn what your, your business is going through or how maybe you're adapting in this time right now. So we have a speaker, Dan Bernadel. He's also on our sales team in Daytona and he's gonna kick this part off for us. Go ahead, Dan. Thank you, Jane. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to speak to the chamber and our members this morning. Uh, really important for us to be coming together as a community uh, to learn together and, and, and share information. Next slide. So uh, to piggyback earlier of Pat Rice's earlier discussion about the content of the 250 plus stories that we've written, this slide is really relevant to understanding how consumers are being forced to change their purchase behaviors at, uh, because of what's concerning them. Behaviors around health and, and pantry stocking and, and sheltering in place and remote learning and the economy. And so Nielsen, uh, did an, uh, conducted some research, and if you're not familiar with Nielsen, Nielsen uh, used to be the traditional uh, TV data uh, measurement. It's a broadcast media company. Thank you, Greg. A broadcast media company that provides data and analytics. And so when you think about the six key consumer behavior thresholds that tie directly into the conversation that, we, that Pat was having earlier around folks's concerns around COVID-19. And if you if you look through the slide from left to right, you'll see folks' behaviors change based on where they are relative to the level of concerns. And it starts with protective health-minded buying, folks thinking about their health, how are they going to address their health, and then reactive health management. And then that moves into what are we, how are we going to get through this time? And, and how we're going to prepare for families, how we're going to be preparing uh, for work from home. And then it gets into the idea of when I do have to be quarantined, when we do have to shelter in place, what do we do? What are the steps that we take? And what are some of the things that we're going to talk, to talk about? And so we're talking about increased online shopping, a decline in store visit, strains on our supply chain, really things that are going to happen because of the localized COVID-19 emergency actions. And then we get into the idea around restricted living and, and, be, and how are people going to react when they're, when they're living in a restricted environment. And, and so this is where businesses have to start thinking about how are we serving our consumer audience during this time? What messages are we, we giving them? How are we helping them to cope? Because at some point in six, you're gonna see that folks are gonna to go to living a new normal, right? Our lives are changed, but we're gonna go into living a new normal. People are gonna be returning to work, to their daily routines, uh, but they're gonna be operating with a renewed cautiousness. And so how businesses prepare to get to step number six, beginning at step number one, or we're likely where we are right now is in steps number two, three, and four, is how are we preparing through these three steps of changing consumer behavior and, and behavior thresholds to help folks start living their new normal and return to their daily activities and their routines. And so it's really important that we start to consider that as a business, that, that this is not the time to disengage from our customer constituents. It's a time to become more engaged with our consumer constituents. Next slide, please. And so one of the things I wanted to share with you is, is, is really to start thinking about how folks are consuming media today versus yesterday. And how are they gonna to continue to consume media as they try to gain more information 
and the opportunity it provides businesses to really get their value proposition, their message. We're gonna to have to modify our message and modify the content of our message uh, to our customer constituents. And we have to understand during this modification process, how are they accessing information and how are they consuming information? And so, as you can see from this slide, over 85% of households watch content via connected TV. One of the things I really wanted you, you all to take a good look at is the variety of devices, right? There's their work PC, television, game, tablet, home PC, and smartphones. Folks are using a number of devices to access information. And consequently, because of the way they're accessing information, it gives us new opportunities to be creative in staying relevant in terms of the information that we're providing them. It gives us new opportunities to be relevant in terms of our content strategy. And how are we going to execute our content strategy and our communication strategy so our audience, our constituency of consumers, understand that we're aware of what they're going through. We're aware that, as Pat said earlier, and as James said earlier, that they're concerned, they're worried. However, they're all like us living in a new normal. And so the way we inform them, the way we stay engaged with them, the way we stay committed to letting them know that we're going to continue to do business with them is a real opportunity for us to create future opportunity to do even better business with our constituencies. Um, and so it's really important, I believe, for us to understand how are they consuming media today? Where are they going to access information? And how can we stay engaged with them while they're doing so? Um, James, back to you. Great, thank you, Dan. So the, the next slide, what we wanted to do is, obviously we have access to our analytics and our traffic on newsjournalline.com. And so this is, this is a glimpse into the type of traffic. And we're not showing you this to say, wow, look at all the traffic we're getting. But to Dan's point, um, people are consuming content. That's what needs to be understood here. And they're consuming content in a massive, massive way. Um, but also to Dan's point, they're using multiple devices to do this. And so what that means is at different times of the day, um, they are tied into, could be their mobile device. It could be uh, their uh, desktop. It could be uh, a, a game console, right? So um, it's important to understand the dynamics and how and when, we're gonna talk a little bit about, okay, if now you're gonna to talk to your customers, right? So you're handling that communication internally with your staff, but now you have to handle communication with your customers. And it's an important time to do that. In fact, it's a critical time to do that. But here you have to know where is your audience, right? And we're gonna talk a little bit about how you define A, who your audience is, and then how you deliver the appropriate message to that specific audience. If you look on this analytics page here, this dashboard, one thing on the left on the left side there, the device category, 76, almost 77% of our traffic is coming through via a mobile device. Uh, so when you think about over 9 million page views and all of that, you know, the majority of that being done via a mobile device, how does that change how you might want to interact or develop your message creatively to deliver that on a device such as a phone, right? And then in the box in the middle at the bottom, uh, when you look at the demographics, um, it's, it's really telling. This is an extremely diverse audience, and this is happening across all types of different media. This happens just to be ours. So now you got to look at it and say, wow, uh, I have to not only consider uh, where people are getting content, what types of people are uh, going and, and retrieving that content, and how do I get in front of the right people? Because you might want to get in front of uh, of the, an audience that's 25 to 34, a different message than you do, you know, 45 to 54, 65 plus. Digitally, you have the ability to do that. So let's go to the next slide and we'll start talking about ways that uh, you need to reconsider uh, how you're, how you're going to move forward in speaking to your, your customers. Um, you know, one of the big challenges you're facing right now is. Um, yeah, real quick, I just want to give you a time check. It's 19 minutes left, okay? Okay. No. Um, one of the big challenges you're facing is kind of twofold. Um, you have a lot of businesses that are in a very crisis mode situation, meaning they've been basically shut down. They're, they're unable to do business at all. Um, and then you have other businesses that are either very limited in how they do business or, or you know, they're kind of 
almost normal to a certain degree. And I'm thinking maybe home service related categories. But the main thing is no matter which situation you're in, uh, keep calm, uh, have a plan. Um, it's important that to know that even though there will be some businesses that are, that are hit in a very, uh, you know, just really bad way that maybe they, they might not come back. Uh, but most businesses won't, uh, they'll slow down. It'll come to a, a really, uh, almost a pause, but we're going to, we're going to come out of it. So how do you best keep your business going? So there's a couple different things to look at. Uh, you have to look at a, uh, your customers, but mostly, you know, okay, your customers, what do they, what do they normally consume from you? Is it a product? Is it a service? Uh, what, what is the most important thing typically that they uh, are looking for you to, to, to work on? So uh, we talk a lot of, with our clients and on our team about helping businesses understand their unique selling proposition and key selling points. And part of your plan has to be, do you know what your key selling points are? Um, however, your key selling points that were in place two weeks ago uh, might be a lot different right now because maybe you have a product or a service that um, really is almost impossible to deliver to a customer. Um, and maybe you have other products or services that are now uh, at the forefront of uh, what your customers might need from you. So you have to understand that. And uh, without that, it's going to be hard to develop a message. Uh, the next thing is really focusing on your brand. Up to this point, um, everything, <laughs> in most cases, if I go and speak to a client, um, almost regardless of the category, their main focus is leads and conversions and things like that. Uh, while that's still important and always and will be, right now, um, I'm seeing a lot more people look at brand. And I think it's really important because brand is critical to how people perceive your business, what you represent to them. And companies spend a lot of money focusing on their brand. Now you have to use your brand to share those common values with your future or current customers. Um, so explain to them uh, how you can help them. Uh, just like we're reaching out to our customers and just saying, basically, how can we help you? What can we do? And we put some things in place. You obviously have to do the same with, with your customers and clients. But uh, right now is a great time to establish your brand as an answer to a question for your customer. Um, you might need to pivot your product. So all of a sudden, like we just mentioned, uh, you were focused in one area of your business on one or two product lines. Maybe now you need to do something completely different or shift to another uh, part of your business uh, that is more useful to your customers at this time. So you could look at, and here we mentioned even other countries, China, South Korea, Italy, and look at uh, the industries, your same industry in those countries. What have some of those businesses had to do during you know, their challenging times? Uh, but you can look at around the country, right? It's probably an easier thing to do and see what some of your peers are doing and determine what direction you might need to go. But it could be a, a really big change in a product, it could be a new product, and we'll show you an example here in a second what a local business just did, um, or it could just be a big change in your message. Um, and then uh, lastly, invest in, in content. Um, that could be content that you're generating, blogs, videos, so forth, to share relevant, helpful, useful, educational information. Uh, and it could also be tying your brand to content that's generated by somebody else. So tying your brand you know, to a local uh, media website uh, could be really important where there's a lot of traffic, a, a lot of uh, different types of individuals there and a lot of credibility there. So you wanna make sure your brand is tied to that. But most importantly, it's creating really helpful, useful content for your consumer. Uh, so they look to you as the, the, the source to help them through a difficult situation. Next slide, please. So uh, on the, the one side of your screen, we have some ideas uh, that you might wanna start considering. So um, first, you might wanna meet consumers where they are and where are they online, just where we're at now. Uh, we're in a four screen society, you know, your, your mobile device, your tablet, your laptop, desktop, um, your television screen, right? It's, it's all online. So a lot of your communication is going to have to take place there. Uh, highlight your frontline employees. You know, it's not always about, you know, the, the, the president of the company or the owner. It's about the people on the front line. I think it humanizes your business. I think it tells a great story. And uh, I would use, you know, your best people in part of your communication to customers. Um, that's probably who your customers talk to anyway, um, in most cases. So why not include them in that communication? Uh, do a safe practices campaign, right? So we see uh, different businesses uh, doing that. We have a local politician who's uh, promoting just some safe practices during this 
this challenging time. Um, how about just, you know, we're open for business at so your restaurant. <laughs> Don't forget us, we're open, but we're delivering now, or we're doing pickup, curbside pickup, uh, a grand reopening when we get out of this thing. So you're kind of reinventing yourself uh, and beginning to set the stage and start working on plans for your grand reopening. Uh, a social media challenge. Uh, someone had mentioned, hey, why don't you uh, post uh, your, your funniest pictures from working at home you know, for a chance to win something uh, or get a discount on something. I think that would be a very popular thing. It's, it's kind of funny how all of a sudden we all do different things, but we're all doing it from our house. And uh, I think that's a connection that could go a long way for a lot of people. Virtual tours, super popular uh, with uh, real estate right now. Some furniture stores, uh, home builders, uh, they're giving people the opportunity to go in and, and you know, look at these uh, showrooms or homes in, in a way maybe they couldn't before. I know in real estate, there's some, there was always some kind of virtual home, but maybe you could do a, a live Facebook um, program where the agent is, is communicating directly and it's more about the person. I know it's as much about the home, but it's a lot about the agent or the broker or the home builder, uh, you know, being a human and sharing, you know, some information that's useful. Um, teach a virtual class, show off a product or a service, uh, maybe show if you do some type of manufacturing, uh, show your process. This is a great time. People have a little bit more time on their hands, uh, but video is a great way to do that. And I would highly encourage you to do that and support a cause. Get involved with uh, areas within the community you can help and let people know that you're helping and how they can help you help others. So uh, on the other side of the screen are really, so how do you do this? How do you come up with these ideas? Um, there's just some bullet points here to talk about, uh, you know, how setting the stage to help you work through the process to develop your new ideas. So some of the simple things, and I'll, I'll run through this kind of quickly, is, uh, is the current campaign you're doing right given the current context. I know there's some advertisers who really haven't changed their message too much. So if they feel comfortable and it's appropriate, keep going with it. But you might want to look at it and say, hey, maybe we need to tweak something and something is change really big. Maybe even if it didn't change for you, it's changed for your customer in some way. You need to be aware of that. Um, and then once you green light the campaign, you got to monitor it and you got to look at that context. And is it right at the moment? Things are changing almost daily, certainly weekly. So uh, you need to look at your messages and make sure your message is appropriate as you move forward. Uh, creative elements. Tone is critical right now. I'm going to show you a couple examples real quick of actual advertisements. And the first thing you'll notice is the change in tone, uh, copy, visuals, keywords, just everything involved with the ad message needs to be looked at. Uh, then you need to go, what we just talked about was, what are your most relevant brands, uh, your products, uh, services, um, and the media that you do end up using to promote this, is it, is, it, is it the right media, right? Can you continue to use that media? Can they do the types of things you need them to do to appropriately get the message out in a constructive way and an efficient way? Uh, and then, you know, ways that your brand can be helpful to people in business in a moment of need. I think you see a lot of businesses doing that. Um, you got to look at your brand and say, hey, uh, are we doing the right things? Are, are we showcasing ourselves the way that um, we want people to recognize us as a leader in this community uh, that's not only helping people, um, but um, continuing to be a big part of uh, making everything a better, better place for us in a, in a couple months. Next slide. So uh, real quick, we'll just go through some examples of changes. This is Advent Health. You know, they typically, you know, they have had a longstanding campaign now for a year or two with uh, Feel Whole Again. They clearly have shifted the message. Uh, theirs is uh, very specific to uh, what's going on. Uh, they're the trusted source for coronavirus care and then some steps on, you know, how to avoid spreading the virus. So they made this change pretty quick um, and they, they saw, you know, what they needed to do, what was most important and you know, for the most part have abandoned uh, their feel whole, at least temporarily, and went directly to you know, being the trusted source for the coronavirus care. Uh, and here's what I kind of touched on before. Here was a product pivot completely. Uh, Copper Bottom uh, Distillery, uh, some of you probably heard about this. Um, they went from you know, you know, making you know, the alcoholic beverages to all of a sudden uh, making hand sanitizer. Um, and it, it's really popular, uh, not only because it's, it's helpful to people, but um, this was kind of went viral and it made a big difference. And, you know, you talk about a shift and a change in brand and, and how people are going to look at your business. And this was a, a, a big move, I think a really good move on their part. Uh, they found something they could do to help people and they made a change. And so, I, you know, hats off to them. That was a really unique 
uh, situation. And we see other business, similar businesses do the same thing. And then here are just some uh, kind of before and after messaging from some clients that are out of market. Um, you know, before this client was uh, talking about, you know, get clean this spring, obviously spring cleaning thing. Now it's more about, you know, clean home, a clean home is a healthy home um, in a safe uh, environment for obviously in this case, your children. So they're, they're looking at ways to, you know, help people uh, have a safer environment at home. Uh, restaurants clearly going to, you know, carry out to curbside, carry out, it will come out. Uh, I think some of the uh, pizza places are even talking about limited contact um, um, delivery services. So just a slight change, uh, different images that people are using uh, in these ads. Next slide, please. We have a, uh, a, a kitchen a designer and installer, right? They went from a one day sale to, hey, we'll do video chat estimates, right? What a great, what a great thing. So now you don't have to have somebody necessarily come into your home. You can do video chat. These are simple, simple things. So they're still in business. They're just finding different ways to connect. Um, hearing aid company, right? What could they do differently? Well, uh, if you have an issue with your hearing aid or um, you want to pick up your hearing aids and things like that, normally just, just drive up. We'll run out. And we'll, we'll give you everything that you need or we'll, we'll pick up your hearing aids for you even at your house and bring them back. So um, just slightly different messages. Um, they're adapting to the, the change in doing how they have to do business. And last slide. And then, you know, here we go. It's, it's that time to mulch your yards and uh, spruce up the yard. Why can't you still do that? And so this business here, they understand, they, you know, the most important thing they understand is, hey, we're open, we'll deliver it. We'll come, you don't even have to talk to us. We'll come by, we'll spruce up the yard. Um, and it's as it's, it's easy as, you know, just, you know, going on our site or giving us a phone call, we'll, we'll be happy to do it. So you gotta think about your message, you gotta think about your brand, and you gotta, you gotta look at this almost on a daily basis to see if, if you know, your message is appropriate at this time. Dan? Thank you. So I'm going to spend just very briefly about 30 to 60 seconds covering this. It's really about taking advantage of what you own. Uh, as you can see in, in the statistic there, folks really, readers wanna learn about products or service through content. And I think I mentioned content earlier. So I want you all to, to, to really focus on taking advantage of your content delivery avenues, right? Don't overlook your, your brand's channels, your website, email marketing, make sure all your information is up to date. Your, are, do you have new hours? Do you have special messages? If you've got email marketing channels, blogs, social handles, anything that connects you with your customers or your audience, now is the time to think about what is my message looking like and is it appropriate for the times? Next slide. It's also really important, again, in terms of communicating, for folks to know, for, uh, it it's, it's always amazes me how few people double check, triple check, and quadruple check that the information on their Google My Business is, is accurate. It's free. Uh, there's no cost. Let's make sure we update this information so that our information on Google My Business and our social media channels, our own content is relevant and up to date. These are really, really very important. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Jane, who's got some really cool information for you guys. All right, thanks all. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the content of the webinar today and that you learned or got something out of it. But I wanted to finish with two quick things. Uh, this week, our company launched two initiatives. Um, the first one is called a Customer Assistance Program. And this allows any business to receive a free virtual consultation regarding messaging and some of the content we just covered, but also two free print ads and 10,000 impressions on our news journal site. Um, just like everybody else, we're in this together and we're trying to find ways to help and support our area businesses, which in turn keep us um, afloat. Um, the second one, if we can go back, Olivia, to the main slide or to the other website, um, this is a website that we did on a national level um, so that people can support their local businesses in the community by buying gift cards for use at a later time. Um, anyone, whether it's an employee, a consumer, or a business owner, can add a local business to this platform, expanding its usability and reach. And we've been highly promoting this, again, across the country, including USA Today, um, to really help give back and help support our local businesses. I encourage 
you to not only use it for your own companies, but to go in and buy gift cards and help particularly those local restaurants. But you'll see some other businesses in there like yoga studios and other folks that are trying to take advantage of the situation. So um, with that, let's see, do we have any other questions on today's webinar? I don't really see any questions, but I'll open it up if anybody has anything. Okay, then Olivia, the last slide we got and we'll close it out. All right, so more important than ever, like we've been saying, staying relevant means thinking differently than you did yesterday during this time. Uh, we are going to get this recording out and the full deck. And now on the last slide, we did add our contact information. So if you wanna reach out afterwards with any questions or concerns, feel free. And with that, Ken, I'll close, give it back to you to close this out. Jane, thank you so much. I uh, wanted to just take an opportunity to thank the Daytona Beach News Journal and your team for putting this together. Um, it, it really came together very quickly. Um, and that's part of you know, the changing dynamic I think that we're all in. You, you really are looking at uh, things that change from moment to moment, whether it's uh, the business environment you're working in or the government uh, decrees that are coming down and have evolved over the last week. And I, I don't think that's gonna change for the foreseeable future. So uh, thank you so much for your uh, outreach, willingness to partner. Uh, for those of you that were, were on the webinar today, I think it's, um, you know, we really wanted to give you uh, an opportunity to think about from the perspective of your business, how are you gathering information, the sources you're gathering that, that from, and it's important because you don't want to uh, make decisions for your business and the livelihoods of not only yourself, but your employees, uh, on information that is unnecessarily inflammatory, uh, closing your business down if it wasn't required. Uh, at the same time, you don't wanna get your information from sources that are downplaying this to the point where you stay open and put your, yourself or your employees at risk unnecessarily. So finding that sane center, and that's something we talk a lot about uh, here at the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce, so that you have good, credible information to make your business decisions with. And then you're talking about how do you communicate with your teams once you've made those decisions, and then how are you communicating with your, your clientele? And I think uh, kudos to James and Dan and Pat, Olivia, Jane, they put together great information for you today, and we're looking forward to uh, sharing this on our website. Um, uh, please share the message far and wide that it'll be out there uh, for folks who weren't able to join us. I know there were a few that had meetings that were required uh, at this exact time today, but they were interested in the information. So. Uh, know that not only the Daytona Beach News Journal, but the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce will be here for you. Um, questions you might have, access to resources, uh, check out our, our new resource page on our website uh, for COVID-19 related information. It's gonna be critical uh, in the coming uh, days and weeks and, and fingers crossed, hopefully not, but possibly months. So uh, Jane and your team, thanks so much for the partnership and uh, putting this together today. I hope everybody found it very valuable. All right. Thank you. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you soon. Take care.